I'm not very experienced with the Monster Hunter series. Monster Hunter World, released earlier this year, was my first time really sinking a lot of time into one of the games. I tried some of the older entries, but I was never able to get into them. However, after enjoying most of my time with Monster Hunter World, I was ready to give Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, recently released for Nintendo Switch, a chance to win me over. So how does it fare? Well, let's start off with what I thought of the story. This is going to be the shortest section of my review, because if you're looking for a story, this isn't the place to get it. You're just a hunter hunting monsters. That's really about it. But for this style of game, I don't necessarily think having a compelling story is needed. All I need is some cool monsters to hunt and I'm good. With that being said, let's get into the gameplay. You'll start your journey by choosing a male or female hunter and customizing their appearance, which does feel a bit limited in terms of the depth of customization available. After that, you'll be thrown right into the world of Monster Hunter. If you're a newcomer to the Monster Hunter series, learning the ropes is going to be the hardest part of your journey. This is not a game that you'll master in just a few hours. This is a game that even after a week or two of playing, you'll be discovering new tools and mechanics you didn't know existed and adapting to how you should handle each battle. There are many different types of weapons you you can use right from the start to battle monsters, and my recommendation would be to try every weapon until you find one you're comfortable using. For me, I ended up choosing the longsword. I tried using the bow as that was one of my most used weapons in Monster Hunter World, but the controls for all of the ranged weapons just didn't feel right to me. All of the weapon types do feel unique in their own ways, which is worth complimenting. There are also hunter styles and hunter arts, which further customize your playstyle. There are six different hunter styles, all of which affect how you'll tackle combat. For instance, aerial style will give you increased aerial movement, making your character more acrobatic, allowing for easier mounting of monsters. I chose the striker style, as it allowed for three hunter arts to be equipped, which I found very useful for the weapon I chose. What are hunter arts though? Well, they are special abilities for your hunter to use in battle, which become available for use after building their meter through combat. They can be super strong attacks or more passive bonuses, like an increase in health gain from potions. There are a wide range of arts available, with many tailored to the specific weapon you're using, and you'll unlock more as you progress through the game. Both hunter styles and arts weren't in Monster Hunter World, and I will say they are an awesome part of Generations Ultimate that give you further customization of how you want to play and adds more variety to the gameplay. Hopefully they appear in whatever the next installment will be. With all of that being said, how does the combat feel? Well, it depends heavily on what weapon and style you're using, but from my experience, it's fairly tight and fluid, if maybe a bit slower than what I was used to with Monster Hunter World. Fighting big monsters can be very exciting, especially once you get into the later game content. It's fun trying to learn and overcome each monster's varied attacks and finding their weak spots. There's a very large variety of monsters in this entry. It'll take quite a bit of playtime before you see them all. After slaying a monster, you'll receive monster parts, which help you to craft better armor and weapons, then allowing you to face the greater threats ahead. There's a massive amount of gear to craft. It's always exciting to see what the new armor set looks like after defeating each new monster. However, crafting these new sets will require a bit of grinding, and unfortunately the grind could be too heavy for some. There's a bit of RNG at play here with what parts you get, which can make an already very grindy game even more grindy. I didn't find this to be a big issue, because the grind at least feels satisfying once you finally get what you set out for, but it's worth pointing out. It can feel a bit tedious at times. There are a few other issues I take with the gameplay as well. The locations you're transported to for hunting have a nice variety, but the way the maps are designed with loading screens between each zone can be a bit jarring especially if you played this year's Monster Hunter World, which did away with this style of map design. All of the load screens in Generations Ultimate are fairly quick, only lasting a few seconds at most. But if you're in the middle of a battle and get knocked into the neighboring zone, it can become a little annoying to see that pesky load screen bringing the action to a complete halt. There are also missions outside of just hunting, like having to gather materials, going fishing, transporting eggs, and to be honest, I don't really enjoy these types of missions all that much, especially the transport missions. These drag on for far too long due to how slow your character moves while carrying the item. Even combating monsters can feel a little clunky at times, mostly due to some aspects that I'd label as artificial difficulty. Why is it when I drink a potion, I have to stand completely still, and then my character has to do this silly pose? It just leaves you open to attack, which is a very strange design choice, and can become quite frustrating. But if you really have to, you could just run into the neighboring zone and heal up there after the load screen. But that would get old very quick. 
eventually you'll get used to these blemishes. But some of these things I've mentioned were vastly improved with Monster Hunter World, so it feels a little weird to go back to this older style of Monster Hunter after playing that entry. The UI and menus, however, are just as mediocre as what I've come to expect from this series. There are simply far too many menus. I feel like there has to be a way to simplify this convoluted design in future games. And just to touch on the co-op multiplayer, from my experience so far, it works perfectly fine. You can search for any lobbies being hosted or host your own and team with up to three different hunters online or even locally. In co-op, you'll embark on quests together, and you can even send text messages into chat to help determine what you want to do together, or just go in silent and wait until someone proposes a quest to do. It's not a perfect multiplayer system, but it gets the job done. And going on hunts with others can really add to the enjoyment of taking down a giant monster. I never had a single disconnect or error, so that's a definite plus. The frame rate of the game was solid in both single and multiplayer, running at 30 frames per second. But there was one area in the game with a lot of moving grass where it started to chug a bit. Other than that, it was smooth sailing. And although it would have been nice to get 60 frames per second, I never took issue with it being locked at 30 frames. Overall, I think the gameplay of Generations Ultimate is solid, but there are definitely a few annoyances like I mentioned. Honestly, the biggest hurdle is just learning the game, but once you do, it can be a lot of fun. So enough about the gameplay, how about the graphics? Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate is essentially an HD port of the 3DS title, Monster Hunter Double Cross, which was only available in Japan at the time of its release. Considering its origins as a 3DS title, it does look pretty good. It's not quite up to the same level as other Switch titles like Breath of the Wild or Mario Odyssey, but it gets the job done. It does look a bit more vibrant and colorful than Monster Hunter World, and the models of the monsters in particular look great, especially for what was originally a 3DS title. But of course the overall visual quality isn't as good compared to World, but obviously that shouldn't be expected. My biggest gripe is the pixelated UI which doesn't look very good, especially on a big HD screen. I would have appreciated a more crisp looking UI. I also think the HUD during hunts is a little too big. It takes up quite a lot of space on screen. I wish there was an option to make it smaller. I will say the game really shines visually in handheld mode, where most of these nitpicks don't matter as much, since having something like a larger HUD has its benefits on a smaller screen. Alright, let's move on to the sound. The music in Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate gets the job done, although outside of the themes for the different hubs, I don't think much of it is very memorable. The sound effects of the monsters and environmental foley are well done, helping to immerse the player into the hunt. It's not an impressive achievement in sound design or anything, but it's acceptable. Alright, time for the verdict. Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate is the first Monster Hunter game to land on the Switch, and I believe that if you're a longtime fan of the series, there's a lot for you to enjoy here. For newcomers, it's harder to recommend seeing as I believe the better starting point would be Monster Hunter World, but if you don't have that as a choice due to only owning a Switch, I do think Generations Ultimate could end up pleasing even a newcomer. I have to stress though, there's a fairly big learning curve to these games, but there's so much content that it could keep you coming back for hundreds of hours. There's so much that I didn't even come close to covering it all in this review. However, at a price of $60, it might be a bit much if you're unsure whether or not you'll be able to get into the grind. Overall, I'd recommend Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. I had a lot of fun in my time with it, but I think for newcomers who are unsure, it might be better to wait for a sale. There are also planned updates and collaborations, like an upcoming Breath of the Wild set for your hunter. It's also worth noting that if you played Monster Hunter Generations on the 3DS, there's a save transfer feature if you want to bring over your old data. Personally, I never tried the feature because I never owned that game. If you're curious and just want to get a taste of this game, there's a demo available on the eShop. Anyway, that about does it for this review. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you later.